Hello and welcome to The Industry is Doom. I'm Michaela Gorman. I'm Blake Hunsley. And we are here to talk about newsing things. We're here because <laughs> we're probably riled up to, to varying degrees. Varying degrees, is, yeah. You because you came into this riled up and told me I should read Barbara Kay's column and then me because I, I subsequently got a bit riled up. But Yeah, yeah. well, you know, reading Barbara Kay or anything in the National Post will do that uh, for... Uh, listeners, I'm familiar. Stop broad stroking. No, like <laughs> Barbara Kay is a columnist with the National Post, and she's been there uh, so long that she essentially gets to run editorial for the whole damn place. <laughs> I at the end of this, I said this article is weird and lazy, and you said it's Barbara Kay. It's in Barbara the National Kay Post. In the I was like, uh huh, okay. No, um, okay. What's the title of this? Because the title kind of gives it away. If you, well, you gave me a brief. A brief little <laughs> snippet intro to pique my interest in reading this. Barbara Kay, The Agony of an Attack Without Explanation and the Pain of Chaos. Ah. Okay. Um, so, uh, The Attack Without Explanation. Mm. It, it was an attack. It has... Well, it did, it well it's a, a s- fucking terrorist attack. Yeah. Ultimately, like, you cross a level of... I don't know. No, no. I can't. I won't broad stroke after telling you not well, to. Well, no, no, no. There's there's definitely, there's a difference even in terrorist attacks where it's like, are you a uh, an individual doing something fucking stupid that you have no idea the outcome? You just <clears throat> figure it'll be violent and it'll get you some attention? You know attention? what? I will broad stroke on this. If you're driving a van into a crowd of people, you can't have any motivation that I would applaud under any circumstances. Even like... Yeah. Just any extreme you can think of? Nope. If you're driving a van into a crowd of people? Nope. Just nope. Nope. So, yeah. you know what? Why does it matter this had no... Okay. Before we get to why does it matter if this had any explanation <laughs> it, or not. It, so... we, and it did have explanation. She just don't like the explanation. Yeah. The, sub, the subtitle of this really gives it away. Knowing that an evil action is part of a pattern rather than a random act is the difference between feeling help, helpless and feeling purposeful. Uh, so that's actually the same logic behind being incredibly paranoid and believing in conspiracy theories. The only reason to believe in a conspiracy <laughs> theory is to not feel weak and powerless in a world that you do not control. No, oh, no. Alex Jones exists to make you feel purposeful when apparently your daily life does not in any way make you feel purposeful. Mm. If you really need to theorize on the motives behind driving people who drive vans into crowds of people to feel purposeful in your life... You have too many problems to be writing any opinions in the National Post. Well, that is a problem. Now I'm really broad stroking, but this has, this is just, okay, well, here's yeah, this, why. You know, this is a problem that I have with most columnists anyway, because they, they constantly are just looking for a reason to uh, exist. Because it, it literally is just one one comment away from being like, why do we pay you? No, 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 no. That's going to be segment three right there. Our <laughs> thoughts on writing columns because... Oh, no. No. So much fun. So much fun. And so much fun to read, but way more fun to write. Just, Very fun oh to write. Oh, my God, yeah. But anyway, back to uh, Barbara Kay here. Uh, so I, you, you explained this to me with clearly some bent to it. Yeah. And so, of course, me, being me, went into it going, well, fuck that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this from the opposite perspective. Oh, yeah. the first, I'm going to try <laughs> to have, a, have some perspective on the it. Introductions, the introductory paragraphs to this are not anything, you know, that really... You know, yanks my chain all that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's talking about how most van attacks, and she and they apparently in the National Post have taken the time to post a long list of ISIS, ISIL, whatever inspired van attacks. Which I'm just that's yeah. There, there's been enough van attacks that you you can be like, no. What's the point? Here's the stats for van attacks. Not not the stats. Here's a full list of them. Let's let's glorify them more than statistics do. Anyway, she's talking. She's framing this as a pattern. And then comments in, uh, I think it's in the brackets here, yes, listed on a full page on Tuesday's National Post. Full page. Full page. Mm-hmm. With one of them committed outside a London mosque, the work of a non-Muslim man, claiming he was avenging an Islamist attack. So she's going on to make the point that this one stands out. This And for anyone who hasn't connected the dots here yet, there was a, a you know van driven into a crowd of people in toronto that killed how many people uh 10 he uh yeah it killed 10 he's been charged with 10 counts of murder mm-hmm. uh, i think or injured 17 i want to say something like that people are making a big to-do apparently uh about the cop who 
took down this guy. Yeah, because he did his job very correctly. He did his job very correctly and did not fill him full of holes. And and, and he was on camera, which is why everyone is making a big to-do. Mm-hmm. But anyone willing to suddenly and quickly glorify the Toronto Police Department should YouTube search Toronto Police Department. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what, what is it? Um, uh, a stop and search? Now, I was thinking more some little... Uh, police brutality moments oh yeah but the, like the stop the stop and search is the the unofficial because it's supposed to be illegal um uh, a policy that the uh, Toronto police use to uh, target predominantly uh, uh black men oh yeah or immigrant men um that, well if we really uh, want to get into a violence. call if we do if we really want to call out sins too like hi you had a serial murderer oh targeting yes. the gay community for for fucking decades? And you ignored and it? And you just ignored that shit? And, and every week they okay. roll out a new victim? But when I get really cynical about all this, I, I as as husband over there yelled at me in the kitchen earlier, yeah. um, you know, they're making progress, which, okay, yeah, no, not gonna, not gonna argue against that when we just said that this cop, you know, did his job. Yeah. Perfect, like, well, perfectly, uh, I would uh, say, or very uh, close to the, the stats side, of, the unofficial stats are rather the numbers that cops like to throw around among each other is 60% of cops are good people. Mm-hmm. Uh, 30% are kind of like, they're, they're normal people and in a good situation with good people, they'll do whatever the good people are doing. In a bad situation with bad people, they'll do what the bad people are doing. Mm-hmm. 10% are fuckers. Mm-hmm. I would say I can't imagine any cop I've ever met and talked to arguing with those yeah. stats really yeah so like, uh, the really creepy part of that mm. which i think we've all seen borne out to to either ends of the spectrum in small towns where there's not that many cops mm-hmm. oh man that pendulum can fucking swing yeah if if you get one really really strong personality in a small detachment mm. and they're an asshole not to say this has ever occurred in Nova Scotia. <laughs> Not to say this is occurring in Nova Scotia. Not no mm. no heavens for why are we talking about this? Visit wonderful Sydney. Unrelated. <laughs> 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 Unrelated. Is this the episode? Is this the opposite land episode? <laughs> wonderful Sydney. Yeah. There we go. Now I'm gonna get letters. Wonderful Sydney. It's so fucking nice. <laughs> We can't actually say why because, um, hey, look over there. <laughs> Direct your comments to Hey Faggot and Hey Tranny. <laughs> hey, there's Frankie McDonald. Uh, that's all we've got for famous people. <laughs> oh no, what did we. Uh, what was the money making Frankie McDonald idea? Oh shit. Um, it was the uh, the beer. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. We gotta contact Frankie about that. That, yeah, that really calmed down that whole story quickly. Well, people must have drank beer, huh? In yeah. this part of the world. Okay. Uh, back to Barbara Kay, because we'll get to this. Like, that irked me that she broke the pattern after mm. a non-Muslim, because, you know, because I get the logic. It was muslim It was Muslim, it was Muslim-adjacent. It was Muslim-related. Yeah, the previous uh, attack in London, because it, it, yeah, it, it involved, it involved her narrative of a clash of civilizations. So it doesn't actually matter in her narrative if the attack is perpetrated by a Muslim or against Muslims. She just wants that specific conflict. Whereas I like this, the term Muslimy. I think that, that I think that's a serious sounding word to fit the serious, you know, ne- necessity of this article. I Muslimy. I, I, I'd like to say that, uh, this, this is uh, Muslimy is one of the Muslim-esque. words that I've, I've picked up from a, a friend of mine, a very dear friend who is a, a Iraqi comedian. Oh. And he <laughs> his sense of humor is impeccable, um, but. The thing that will stick with me until the day I die, and I'll blurt out uh, if I ever have dementia, and it will confuse people forever, is um, he, was, he was midway through a joke that was bombing, and he just said, hey, you guys like Michael Jackson? You got hit by, you got struck by a stolen airplane. Jihad. And he brought the fucking house down. That is fantastic. Yeah. I read about a uh, Muslim comedian in New York. I can't remember her name. Someone should Google this and send it to us. I should be Googling it now, but we don't have time for that. That's that's on the air research. Um, She uh, introduced herself post 9-11 at a comedy show, like just within the year afterwards. And she said, hello, my name is, and I wish I remembered it here. Or at least that's what it says on my pilot's license. Yeah. 
I remember like, that. Bit of an uproar in the back, brought the house down yeah, in the front. Just blah, fantastic. I, I remember that was that was featured on a documentary hosted by Albert Brooks called Finding Humor in the Mu- Finding Comedy in the Muslim World. We're gonna look up that name because she was great. It was a it was a decent documentary. Uh, we should yell at Barbara Kay some more. Oh, we we we, we shall. But you know, I I, I kind of like to think that this is undermining her. Yeah, you know what? That's true. Yeah, why are we focusing on... Yeah, I'd rather uh, explore the enjoyable things that come out of uh, being multicultural instead of being a panky little shit, especially when the situation doesn't actually have anything to do with her goddamn class of civilizations. It was an incel fucktard. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, mm-hmm. And for those unfamiliar... There we go, at least that's what it says on my pilot's license. Shazia Mirza? Shazia, Shazia Mirza. Mirza. Uh, uh, she's done stuff recently. I just can't think of it. Uh, she's British? What? She's a British Muslim. She is of Pakistani heritage, known for her deadpan delivery. That joke only works in deadpan, and that's oh, what's great. That, I, I kind of love it. Yeah, we're, we're sitting here lauding by name, as we should, a Muslim yeah. comedian. And I, I, I would love to go with Barbara Kay. To one of her shows. Yeah. Oh man, Barbara Kay, I'm sure you're listening. Uh, <laughs> I think you should take us both to Shazia Mirza's next show. I would think that would be really fun. We can go backstage afterwards and all have a good laugh. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Probably at your expense, uh, Barbara, but well. Don't worry, if you bring security, no one will be, you know, offended. It's fine. And if you bring uh, Jonathan, we can stick him in the basement and forget him there. Okay, so Barbara Kay was struck by a tweet put out by Toronto Sun's Lori Goldstein. Always a good idea to reference the Toronto Sun. Oh, God, and Lori Goldstein. In today's world, I th- uh, educate me for a moment on Lori Goldstein. Uh, Lori Goldstein is... he is... as fun as Jonathan Goldstein? Oh, uh, uh, he's worse. He's... But stop that. No, he is, he is the Toronto Sun's uh, right-wing... Uh, uh, all right, so there's this really fascinating thing in Canadian media where we have uh, uh, Jewish apologetics for racists. And so they will, uh, uh, essentially, if, if you're willing to be a Jewish writer and like apologize for other people doing really terrible things, and I, I don't mean like weighing in against Palestinians in the Israel-Palestinian debate. I mean like outright just being like, yeah, the blacks really did uh, uh, better under slavery, and it's like um, we can reference directly Faith Goldie's coverage of yeah. white supremacists in the and states. She's e- not Jewish, Ezra, but certain like Ezra Levant is though, and Ezra runs a network that gives neo Nazis a place to shine, and that is so confusing on so many levels. Except that he grew up surrounded by them, and this is a possibly some kind of like adapt and survive strategy i'm a master at ignoring ezra levant i couldn't have told you that right now about him like i just i pay i you know what i tuned in once not to anything directly on television featuring him of course but to just like you know i caught him talking yeah and i just thought that's someone whose freedom of speech i value greatly and should therefore completely ignore yeah and i just i have a cultural blind spot it's great can't tell you anything about the man. Just no. Occasionally, I hear rage directed at him, and I go, "Why are you wasting breath on that?" And I move forward. <laughs> Speaking of wasting breath on things, Lori Goldstein on Tuesday in today's world, I think we all know what we're thinking it could be. Why do you gotta be like that? See that that's what. Why I do you mean? gotta be he's, like he's that? He's a racist pile of shit who just supports white nationalists when it's against. Like, let's racist. hope it isn't. That's the part that puzzles Barbara Kay. The let's hope it is not in today's world. I think we all know what we're thinking it could be. You know what, Lori, if you tweeted out, I think we all suspect this is Muslims, Muslim-related terrorism, Muslim-y, Muslim-esque. Here in my extended amount of characters Twitter now allows, I don't even know, is it like 7,000 now or something? <laughs> we'll pretend for Lori's sake that it is. I'll explain to you why I hope it either is or isn't Muslim-adjacent. Mm. Because otherwise... What the fuck is the point in any of that tweet? Seriously. Yeah. I hope it is. I hope so. It's not. This is this is the catchphrase I thought of while reading this article for Barbara Kay. Barbara Kay, I have some pithy and little rhymy advice for you. It's not about hoping after a terrorist attack. It's about coping after a terrorist Ooh. attack. You deal. You help people. 
You let investigators do their jobs bias-free. You let laws be enacted based on the results of those investigations. Yeah. Right? Let's not pretend bias-free, but whatever. But hopefully, we'll hope. hopefully, not 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 some, like, charge Coke, Barbara Kay. Patriot Don't Act. hope, Barbara Kay. That, that should be a, 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 a t-shirt. Uh, a spe- not 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 the not necessarily the barbecue one, but the first one. You don't you don't hope against terrorism. You cope with terrorism. So Barbara K writes back. Oh my god! <laughs> I know. I keep going back to her here. Uh, Barbara. Writes back. Uh, what should we hope it is? And then she goes on. Should we merely hope it's merely a deranged individual? And she goes on about how it's easier to cope if it's part of Muslim adjacent terrorism than if it's just some rando because she says when it's linked to and she does give us you know the benefit of the doubt of going beyond jihadism for one second and saying if it is related to any ideology be it jihadism or you know the obviously referential in this day and age for anyone without having to wikipedia this bader meinhof gang in the 70s and 80s we at least have something positive to do with our grief this is straight up quoting barbara k we at least have something positive to do with our grief. We can transmute it into white hot anger. Yeah, which is like our thoughts turn to probable suspects. Just under insight. Analysis of the event because we're all fucking inspectors here of our security policies because we are also all legislators here. Yeah, that has of ways to prevent to another attack policies. and we do prevent many. It has nothing to do with us preventing it other than, you know, being generally watchful citizens with logic at our disposal and, you know, self-preservation skills. Yeah. That does not extend to five-minute hates or however length you're talking about with your white-hot anger, Barbara Kay. Yeah, no, that I personally, uh, uh, I read that as incitement. That's fucked up. Yeah. I really didn't want to agree with you because I just like to be contrary and it makes the show better, I think, when we do disagree. But that's fucked up. Uh, I am frequently right when it comes to politics. <laughs> most I people, am frequently right most, when it comes to most politics. Most people are always uh, uh, a little amazed by that, and yet... Most people are a little amazed that big old gay pot smoking <laughs> me is a little to the right as well when it comes to politics. Go figure. No, no, Man, I'm this is so right bad, though. You know, so it's, then it's just, sh- these people are... It, it's this weird pattern. Barbara Kay goes completely off the rails, justifying... Not, well, justify her difference in reaction at all to a terrorist attack that killed 10 people. Yeah. We haven't even referenced the name of the person who killed these people. And in part, it's because I don't remember it right now. But in larger part, it's because I don't fucking want to. Yeah, fuck him. Don't glorify that shit. Just deal with it. Help people. Donate blood if you're not a big old mo, Canada. <laughs> anyway, back to Barbara Kay. She goes on about how this is an issue that should involve Jordan Peterson for some reason. Yeah. Because... Oh, because technically a fan of his is the uh, culprit. No, wait, that's not the reason at no, all. She's was... not self-aware enough for that. All right. <laughs> but she feels this need for mental order versus mental chaos, which is getting a bit out there for a National Post column in my mind. No, but... no, that, that's that's uh, Peterson's own framing of his own fascist ideology. This is so weird. Peterson's thing is weird. That's from his book. Peterson's quotes are super weird. Yeah, they're mostly chaos is book where too. chaos is where we are when we don't know where we are and what we are doing when we don't know what we are doing. It is, in short, all of the all of those things and situations we neither know we neither know nor understand. Deepak, what are you saying? That actually sounds a lot like uh, Joseph Goebbels. It's much more important that we tune in for Barbara Kay's prompting and order. Quoth Jordan Peterson. Order is... Ex- uh, really, you want to expand on order in this day and age? Yes. Really? Yes. Really? Sure Can you did. look to the south? Can you turn your head to the south? Can you turn your head to the south and cough, Barbara Kay? Because I don't think you can. Oh, uh, he can fucking uh, salute to the south. Hey! Uh, he knows exactly what he's Order saying. is explored territory. It's the flag of the nation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the value of the currency. Uh... Order is the floor beneath your feet and your plan for the day. Order is the place where the behavior of the world matches our expectations and desires. And above all, quoth Barbara Kay in the middle, this, back to Jordan Peterson, where everything is certain, we're in order. We like to be there. In order, we're able to think about things in the long term. What the 
fuck does any of this have to do with what she's talking about? What order are you planning to take away from someone driving a van into 10 people? And why does that order that you plan to take away from this suddenly steer off into a need to imagine Justin Trudeau, again here, this is Barbara Kay, lecturing the country on diversity being our strength. And then her final line, which I do not understand, and I'm hoping you can explain to me. Mm -hmm. This is back to uh, Goldstein at uh, whatever that nonsense paper I try not to read is. Mm -hmm. He was stealing himself for news of a hijab attack that this time wouldn't be a hoax that really was directly linked to spillover rage at the attack. So what that means is Lori actually really, really wanted all of this violence to have been a, a, a... Uh, uh, perpetrated by a Muslim person so that he can hate them. No, I think in another way, she's saying he's kind of virtue signal signaling that he hopes it's not that this time when she's just making it an obvious, well, no, you know, he... an obvious conclusion that if it is a, leg if it is a Muslim adjacent attack, that there would be spillover, spillover rage at the attack that there no, would be what it, what... after she calls for a white hot yeah. anger. No, uh, it, it's it's not him virtue signaling at all. It's him dog whistling uh, towards it and oh, inciting this isn't her last line. the I'm same sorry. thing. They're they're actually both attempting to incite and claiming their own surprise as being a reason for it. Now she's at the end here. She's finding debates over ideological motives behind terrorist attacks exhausting. A merely deranged masochist can produce social unity. What are you talking about? You just finished wishing that this was a Muslim adjacent attack. Yeah. No, it, it's actually, uh, it, it's, uh, it's classic, and I, I'm, I'm going to go straight there. It's classic fas uh, fascist uh, uh, tactics in which if you don't get the attack that you want, you simply point at an attack that occurs and say, well, regardless, we have to have something in, in store, so we might as well have something in store that takes care of everything. And they're, I don't they're know what you're talking about at all, order. but in completely unrelated news, I'm yeah. pretty sure communists burned down the Reichstag. I'm pretty sure <laughs> they did, and you can blame it on them as a large group of people if that gives you a sense of mental order. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, I'm, I I'm having too much fun quoting Barbara Kay. I'm pretty sure Poland attacked that radio station. I'm pretty sure Poland attacked that radio station. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, she's copying to extreme selfishness. And saying it, she, she sure would have preferred, is. This is Barbara saying I would have preferred it had been linked to an act of jihadism or something else linked to a clear ideology or cause. Because I like to be able to think about things in the long term. I prefer mental order to mental chaos. There. Okay. No. Seriously. Have you never watched Deep Space Nine in your life, Dominion Changeling Lady? She. I wish she had perfectly smooth features. Oh, Barbara Kay, can you get like a lot of Botox so you look like a founder? You really should. Because you sound like a founder. Oh my God. How does this... Okay, yeah. so so I've just encountered this within the last, like, 30, 40 minutes. So yeah. what's the reaction to this so far? Oh, the reaction is, wow, Barbara Kay, um, thanks for letting us know that you want there to be a race war and you this is how you respond to uh, a, a terrorist attack is to point it and go, but it doesn't give me a good ex uh, excuse to yell at Muslims. So people are taking it in a cool, calm, measured fashion. Yeah, right? yeah. That's good. Yeah, mostly good. mostly shouting at her. Which is... Um, Which is exactly okay. what any good columnist really wants. Well, there's the problem, because every time you visit the page to read the thing, to share it with someone, to yell at her, to comment on it, they're making money. See, I think it goes beyond that, and I want to get back to this in the last segment when we, when we get a little mm -hmm. self-referential here, but... I kind of think that's fine, and I kind of, when people, you know, when I used to write a lot of opinion pieces, and I would get questions from people saying, like, do you really believe what you wrote? Like, you know, at the time, I would say the vast majority of it was true, or I was making it clear in it that it wasn't true. Yeah. That I, you know, was taking a counter perspective for the sake of, you know, it needed to be done. But no, a lot of the time, aside from being generally contrary in nature, I think a columnist is at their most fun, but also kind of at their most necessary when they're expounding a minority opinion. Because it does generate discussion. People wouldn't be having this conversation without reading Barbara Kay and getting outraged. The but before you get <laughs> high dutch me on me, there are serious limits to that and serious responsibilities with that. Yeah. And generating a five-minute hate against anyone is not yeah. It falls 
I'm not saying I, I'm not copying to perfection on my record in this realm, but like, no, that falls well beyond. Yeah, there's a difference between, say, taking an article where you can talk about how no one really discusses with anyone anymore because social media this and technology No that, one talks to their neighbors. You. Talk to your neighbors, or, Canadians. Or, or, or espousing, hey, why not find one thing from someone that you politically disagree with so that you... No, we're not doing that. We're going straight to actual, like, outright incitement because incitement actually pays the bills now it's so fucking dog whistly like yeah that's what pisses me off is you and i'm not even saying to the point where you have to read between the lines this is clearly something that was parsed well by a lot of people mm -hmm. judging from what you're saying judging from my optimism in the <clears throat> readership skills of anyone who read this but it, it's why the, do you the glory of twitter uh, is immediate so uh, frustrating uh, response you know from others in you, the industry uh, yeah, and you know, eventually, anyone you support politically is going to pull this out of the closet naturally, like at some point or another. Oh yeah, these tendencies. So why can't? Oh, it's so frustrating that anyone has to has to take that time. It well, that's and that's the thing is it. No matter what, it works out for Barbara Kay because it means people are discussing her. She's making money for the paper. Um, she'll be referred to as as if she is a person of influence uh, by people who either are trying to take away from her or people who agree with her. So what you're saying is I should extend my Ezra Levant policy to Barbara Kay. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, my Barbara love, Emile, while well, yeah, we're on the Barbaras. The fuck. Yes, uh, Barbara Emile. Oh, God. <laughs> what other Barbaras? Walters? Done. Barbara Done. Walter. La, 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 la. I just don't need the uh, RuPaul season one filter. Oh, that's fair. I feel like I'm good on Canada, you? Yeah, no, that seems about right. I feel yeah. like no one cares about our leader anymore now that Does Emmanuel that Macron sense? has wooed America, which I want to talk about a bit in part two. Yes. I'm just trying to think if there was anything else. I feel bad for Justin. He's not in any American's dreams tonight. Oh, no. It's what will uh, uh, Andrew uh, Shearer complains about now? I like that we're doing it like he has any discernible <laughs> Quebecois accent, let alone super bad Quebecois super, accent. Super bad Quebecois. <laughs> it is not super bad. This is how my cousins talk. You know, he's going to like go to like a bunch of Zumba classes or like do a whole bunch of CrossFit to like recover from Emmanuel Macron having, <laughs> having spent speech based sex with anyone yeah. political in America. Yeah, no, so somewhere right now, Trudeau is on the treadmill running like mile 50 and he's just hate watching Macron and he's like, I'm gonna, oh, no <coughs> shit, fuck shit. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, no, I got got to got to be perfect. Got to be perfect. I feel with speech related sex with anyone in America, <laughs> that might be the the natural link up to segment 2 and we should just <laughs> We should just sally forth into the yeah. America All segment. All right, let, let's do sally this. Sally forth, sally forth. That's a great fucking drag name. Sally forth. Sally forth. Sally fifth. <gasps> sally sally fifth. fifth. Oh, Ain't God. nobody knows Sally fifth. Yes. Everyone stops at four. I'm claiming that. I'm sally claiming that. Fifth. I'm changing my drag name officially to from sally. Colleen Collect to Sally fifth. There we go. Oh, my God. You don't have to approve. You can have reservations. It's fine. I'm taking Colleen Collect then. Fuck off. No. Segment <laughs> two. America. Emmanuel Macron. What's on your mind? Because I've, I've been chatty a lot for segment uh, one. I actually, like, uh, in terms of America, I've got nothing to say because... Um, oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> this is the, like, rambles off the chain episode. Yeah, yeah because every, every now and then, stuff just kind of, like, ambles forward in a way that I'm just like, uh, no, uh, I'm bored. I'm going to go binge watch some TV. So I, I've recently watched Lost in Space on Netflix, and I watched Troy on Netflix, and I watched Turn on Netflix, and uh, I noticed that uh, uh, Melania Trump went to Barbara Bush's uh, funeral, and Trump went golfing, and so everyone is like, once again, we're back on the Melania might be saved uh, uh, bandwagon. Let's talk Barbara Bush for a moment. Oh, yes. That was a big America event. That yeah. happened. Yeah, though, that's true. It's weird because, in a way, Barbara Bush considering the magnitude of everything that goes on in America these days, nothing really crazy happened this past week. No, it, it's been way. really, like, oddly quiet. Yeah, like, just, you know, America's at a, a, it's at a 20 all the time out of 10. <laughs> so just, you know, well, you know, Barbara Bush died. And you know what? Like, everyone likes to bash a Bush. I get that. 
And I also get that I hate the concept of never speak ill of the dead. And she also has, you know, she's she's got a a history of speaking out against progressive stuff, and she. There's a lot of time she ignored requests for assistance, and, and, you know, she's just as bad as fucking Nancy Reagan, so... No, no, no. <laughs> That's where I was going with all this. I was going to say that I have nothing to say bad about her, because, you know what? In the only things I know about her from from things I've read, I just don't care about her politically, because, as we'll get to in a moment, mm. of the magnitude of certain other first ladies' deceits. But no, she seemed like she had a reputation for being a good mom and like yeah, no, a nice lady, and I'm like, that's fine for me. That's fine. You know why? Because you're not Nancy fucking Reagan. You're not Nancy fucking Reagan. Nancy fucking Reagan. Well, what what I understand the difference is, uh, uh, Barbara, if if you were drowning, Barbara would ignore you. Nancy would come over and dunk your head under further. No, no, no. It's much no. It's much simpler than that. No. <laughs> if you were drowning, I think. Barbara Bush would dispatch one of her children to go save you to display their athletic prowess. <laughs> Just Jeb and, uh, and W gonna, running no, down the no, beach and going, gonna, come on, I'm going to get there first. I'm going to get there first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to her. I think she might have been, I think she would have been genuinely concerned for your well-being if you were legit that far the end of this sort of restrained <laughs> analogy if you were actually drowning in the sea. <laughs> I think Nancy Reagan, I think... I think she would have dispatched a security, like, secret service guy to rescue you. But then when you got on shore and she realized that you were either A, uninsured, B, gay, C, Hispanic, or D, Rock Hudson, then she would just deny you any medical assistance whatsoever and let you die on the beach. Alone. On a foreign beach. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, any listener out there, please Google Nancy Reagan, Rock Hudson. What a wretch. Oh yeah, no. Forever she was Bush, horrible. rest peacefully. You were not Nancy Reagan. That should be on her. That's a great epitaph. Spawn some you bushes. You are not Nancy Reagan. No, no. Under Nancy the pro, under the cons column, uh, <laughs> under the cons column, cons column. Supported Bush one. Yeah. Spawned Bush two. Ugh. Probably in reverse order on the cons column. Ugh. Pros column. Spawn Jeb. Do not tell me, as someone who enjoys comedy, that Jeb is not a pro. Jeb is definitely uh, terrific. For content, um, and, and 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 almost unique because um, while he is terrific for content, he is also completely powerless. Mm-hmm. So you have no fear that he will continue existing and being terrific for content. Nope, nope. I'm highly entertained by him whenever he shows up. It's rare that I notice him there. Please clap. I know. Right. <laughs> uh, pros column. Good mom, nice lady. From what we hear. Yeah, we'll yeah. give her that. Good mom. Nice yeah. lady. Uh, last mention in the pros column? Not fucking Nancy Reagan. Not fucking Nancy Reagan. That doesn't seem sacrilegious or inappropriate for a tombstone. No, I don't think that seems... No, that, that seems very appropriate. That seems it's rather honorable. <laughs> Let's move on from death and get to sexier topics. Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron. Uh, now, he's very unpopular uh, in, back in France where, uh, despite winning an election two years ago uh, on a kind of a, a landslide against a, a white nationalist, uh, he's turned out to be a, a, quite a neoliberal. Uh, and anyone who knew anything could have said, yeah, no shit. I'd like to ask a serious question about the French electorate. Mm-hmm. What would satisfy the French electorate? Nothing. That's it's the thing. French electorate. I feel like we could have been talking about any French president ever. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and it would have been that exact same statement. The most French thing I have ever seen was a a, a protest near riot by champagne workers. I would like to see a spoiled ballot that just said "Democracy is a sexy lie." A sexy lie. Would you like a baguette and a cigarette? Liberté, fraternité, Beyonce. Yes. That's the most French thing I've ever thought of. I love that uh, bit of graffiti. So, did you catch any of the coverage today about this whole visit speechiness thing? Is there, are there, is there a dinner tonight? Is that what's going oh, on? Oh, yeah. There's definitely going to be a dinner. And if I recall, no, no Democrats. Democrats are allowed. No, this is a Democrat-free, a Democrat and, I believe, media-free event. Mm-hmm. Which is just stupid um, uh, because uh, uh, Trump Who's going to have, have sex with the women drunkenly? <laughs> 
Well, who the fuck's going to be taking all the photos of well, Trump Well, Emmanuel being Macron will have sex with his teacher drunkenly. Oh, yes. But aside from that, like, I'm, it's uh, just... I'm going to bang my teacher, huh? You just young waiters and, you know... I, you know, I don't fear for the Secret Service. The ones that well, are into it are into it, and the ones that aren't, they're under the teeth. So. Yeah, well, you know, the room's full of Republicans, so the page boys will have to watch out. Well, that was the whole crux of my previous waiter joke. Yeah, yeah so the waiters are, are, uh, are old enough to be employed. It's a, it's a drunken Republican Party event. I'm pretty sure that some someone, the one... No, this is a Trump White House. There is no one logical person in the Trump White House. No. No, no, the Page Boys are still working late despite the circumstances, and they're, uh, pad in the pan, in fact. Oh, dear. So, apparently, Emmanuel Macron, like, said a bunch of, like, super nice things about Trump this morning, and Trump said a bunch of super nice things about Macron. Yeah. And then Macron stood in the, you know, before a joint session of Congress, as you pointed out, in front of the, how do you say it? Uh, the fa- uh, the fascisti. Yeah, it's, it's that symbol that nobody in America understands represents Italian fascism in any way. So. It's the faggot with the axe. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. Faggot There's an offensive axe. symbol in your Senate. There is not. Fuck you. It's a faggot with an axe. Take down that faggot Take with an axe right now. Take down that faggot with an axe. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Barbara K. Oh, yeah. Anytime. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's Barbara K with me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And then he stood in front of this, uh, in front of this fight with an axe, mm-hmm. and uh, in, and to an extent set Trump on fire, mm-hmm. which was very nice. It's always nice to see Trump and, 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 and metaphorically the, set on fire. Metaphor- it's always nice to see it metaphorically. And achieved a, a wonderful French language uh, uh, pun uh, by uh, not not that it was in the French language. But the rule of Lou. Uh, no, the the Lou, uh, the le rule of Lou. Uh, I love his pronunciation on that. No, no, no. The the classic. Um, this is this is how a French person makes a pun in English. There is no planet B. See what I did there? Huh? That was great. Huh? That was great. Huh? I really like that writing, but that is so French. That was great. There was so much hilarity in this speech. He stood up for a new multilateralism that is rooted in the liberal democracy, <laughs> uh, liberal democratic perspectives that we apparently enacted. Well, no, to, no, I'm not going to be that guy that we enacted after World War II. Yeah. And then all the Republicans stood up and clapped. Yeah. And I laughed and I laughed and I laughed. And then he expounded on the necessities of protecting all minorities and the Republican Republicans, including Mike Pence. <laughs> and what's his name? The dorky one from Teen Beat Magazine. Oh, Paul Ryan. That's him. Uh, who, you know, at least, in, at least in his case, he doesn't discriminate against minorities. He also wants to disenfranchise the, the elderly, who are not a, that big, not a, really a minority. Yeah, I, I will give it to Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan doesn't he hate anyone. Ever, well, no, he yeah. just wants to disenfranchise He, he just doesn't poor. want ever any money going to anyone, ever. Yeah. That's all that he wants. He yeah, just yeah. wants money to be left alone and to never, ever interact with something like an economy. Total shame you're retiring. Total shame, <laughs> Teen Beat. Anyway, uh, Teen Beat and Mother Dearest there. Mm-hmm. Um, the mommy VP. Dearest. Yeah, Mommy Dearest. That's oh. a, no, no, Mother Dearest with that one. Teen Beat and Mother Dearest stood up, stood up oh. and clapped when yeah. uh, when Sexy Pants McFrench Face there went on about the need to protect minorities, which is just a hoot. Here's the question, though. Which one was just following the other? Oh, oh, I think they just were, I think they have a spring that activates under their seeds. But fortunately, it had some serious Republican psychophants manning the uh, the springboards. Because when Emmanuel Macron said we had, man, there were a lot of like, it was the most repetitive speech I've ever heard, which of course all the media called shockingly presidential for being heard in America these days, which is mm-hmm. true. But still that delightful every previous president level of dignified repetitive nonsense as opposed to the current ones yeah undignified repetitive at nonsense. no point during the speech did he make fun of a disabled person personally uh i was distracted by a small pad thai related house fire so i may have missed that in, in a if in that a pad thai angle. was burned i didn't notice thanks very good oh our cooking show will follow inevitably <laughs> someday Someday. Oh, God. I, uh, uh, that would be a, uh, an amazing show. Uh, I would destroy that show. There was there was something else hilarious that Pensy and Team Beat stood up and clapped for. Pensy and Team Beat. I wish I could remember what it was. It was, equ- it was equally funny to defending minorities. It may have even been better. But the one that they couldn't bring themselves to stand or clap for was when 
uh, macro. <laughs> he was talking. He was talking about the way we act, the way we counter different things. Uh, he went on about fake news, which was initially weird when I thought, you know, that's I know another president that goes on and rails against fake yeah. news, but then went on essentially about the need for truth and not just making shit up, which was nice to see him add another spark onto the Trump fire. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's but, important uh, to say. Yes, but then he got to fighting that we must, the need to, he, the need to combat this with that. The need to combat this with that. We face this, we face this, this with this, this with und that this. with that. Not und, sorry. Whoops. Und, oh, und. I'm in trouble with our French listeners. What? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but then he said we must combat global threats, mm. I believe it was, with science. And mother dearest. Yeah. And Team Beat sat there. Yeah. Sat there. Didn't twitch. Not one of their fake muscles moved at all. Yeah. Team Beat is still making money uh, off of uh, donors that don't believe in science and climate change. And Mother Deer simply uh, isn't allowed to acknowledge that the word exists. It was amazing. It was amazing. The control. They didn't... There was no... You know, it was obvious that they were springboarding yeah. so many of the comments. Which, and there were a lot of... You know, there were a lot of standing ovations from... Everybody and then many from the Democrats, which also will be very funny when it comes to yeah in enacting any of the grand dreams he kind of alluded to. But yeah, couldn't for science. You can't clap or stand for science. No, couldn't couldn't do it. Uh, even though yeah, it, it's it's the reason that America is the uh, uh, financial success <coughs> it is. The the post uh, uh second world war uh, uh industrial and scientific explosion nope he Can't did stand go, for it he did go on at length about how he does not understand the need for or the attraction to strong man leaders and enhanced powers and all kinds of things basically the there was a large segment of the speech that i heard that i just visualized him sticking his, his thumb very firmly against one side of his nose while spitting on a Trump on a Trump mega poster. Well, curiously, that actually may have been a reference more to Putin because uh, uh, there there are three. What's the points. difference again? Oh uh, well, the difference is that uh, uh, since uh, Macron is uh, uh, leader of one of the primary uh, uh, benchmarks of military uh, standard in Europe uh, and in NATO outside of America, he actually has to deal with Putin on a day to day like tactical basis and oh no i meant the difference between trump and putin oh no that i'm, I'm saying that uh, uh he doesn't have to deal with trump he has to actually deal with putin no but I, I i fail to understand the premise where there's a difference where dealing with trump is not dealing with putin oh um he's dealing with putin direct not through oh someone. not through a subsidiary like yeah trump. yeah no oh, no he's dealing states. with with proper he's he's dealing with the fact that um, if it wasn't, uh, if, if uh, Merkel and Germany weren't there, it would be all on him mm -hmm. to protect Europe at the moment. Uh, because the, the, the Brits aren't going to do shit. Look, Theresa May is busy. She has many wheat fields to run through. Yes, there are many apartment uh, complexes to burn down. And, yes. and then go, no, that, was, that was terrible. That was good. Oh, so bad. Don't forget the, the shockingly high number of uh, Ulster nonsense parties that hate mm -hmm. things like gays, abortions, and all kinds of other good things. Yes. Well, <laughs> oops, gays and abortions and other good things. Gays and ah. abortions and other good things. Whatever, the right to them is good. Eat it. <laughs> Have huh? some or don't. No yeah, one cares. Exactly. Yeah. Tiny American flags for all. Tiny, just little little hipster vest pins that just say, it's your body, it's your choice. I, You know what, America? In the America segment, if you want to be one of your live free or die libertarians, if you want to be a sovereign citizen and you can't embrace the concept that you should only vote for people who believe that it's your body and therefore it's your choice, what happens to it on that level? It's Fuck funny. you. It's funny how everyone who says live, live free or die never dies. They don't live free, but they never die. Like, they just keep complaining. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I was I, <laughs> live free or die. Really, you've got a driver's license. Isn't that against your base philosophy? Well, fuck you. <laughs> That's pretty great. It's you know what? It, as sloganeering goes, like, if I was to visit a state, which nope, not not well, not well. There's orange at the head. Nope. <laughs> 
But seriously, New Hampshire, I would consider it based on the on the bravado of your of your license plates. You'd think What's that New bad? Hampshire would it would it, you'd think that it would come from a, a, a Texas, a more inter- yeah, Texas, you like, fuck a more goddamn live free interesting or die. fucking bam, bam, bam. state. Yeah, yeah, Arizona, where it's like live no. free or no. you die. No, here's your options. No, you can live in the middle of the desert. No, completely free, or you can die in the middle of the desert. Again, completely. Arizona's free. is live briefly, then die because it's all ah. ancient Republicans. <laughs> Who are retired and living in gated communities. And New Mexico is live free. Don't broadstroke, Mickey. Do Don't crack broadstroke. and methamphetamine <laughs> and then die. <sighs> What's Texas? Uh, uh, Texas is uh, complicated. Now, now be careful because no, te- I Texas see- is complicated. Not secret love for Texas. That's a great one. Texas's license plates should just say it's complicated. Big, no, big but complicated. Big but complicated. Yes. Te- uh, uh, t- the best. It's all bigger and more complicated in Texas. The best definition of Texas is just a, a, a gif of uh, uh, Hank and Bobby Hill standing next to each other. And Bobby looks at Hank and Hank doesn't look at Bobby. That is Texas. Wow. Wow. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but it's like, that's, How? that's, te- no, 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 that's Texas because like Texas will always be like this stoic, proud thing of the past that has this vibrant potential future, but like it, it can't acknowledge it. But at the same time, that vibrant potential future is just going to grow into the same stoic past and it's going to ignore that vibrant potential future. Look. look. Texas has more confidence when it comes to Texas than America has confidence when it comes to America. This is true. And we're Canadian. <laughs> How am I not going to look at Texas and just be like, God damn, man. Like, you go, girl. <laughs> you wake Fuck. up every day and you go, I sure man, am. Man, <laughs> what's that new Amy Schumer movie? I want Canada to wake up one day with the confidence of Texas. Oh, God. Yes. That would be great. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my way. Everything's bigger in Texas. Is it Texas? Everything's fucking huge up here. It's frozen, but it's huge. I know uh, some people from Texas. A woman is actually, like, you know how, 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 like, proper Texan ladies, you call them Miss, Miss, uh, whatever their name is, even though, like, you, you, if they're married and stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I know one of them, and, like, they're, they are fascinating people. Oh, yeah. Just fascinating. Yeah. Oh uh, my God! Yeah, I married a young Scottish gent, Scottish Canadian gent who thinks occasionally, say twice or three times a year, he's a uh, big-haired Texan lady. <laughs> it's an enlightening evening. <laughs> it, at points, it's an even an enjoyable evening. But oh he's in my, my God! And you know what? Unlike Barbara Kay, I value enlightenment that comes from <laughs> unexpected <laughs> chaos. Yeah. I don't need order around every corner. So when I wake up in bed some days with the <laughs> with the ginger man dressed as a Scottish or sorry as a Texan lady, I'm fine with that. Barbara Kay would be fucking shitting bricks. God, at least it's not a Muslim Barbara Kay. I'm done with America. Are you? We're done with America. We're done with you, America. I'm kind of I'm kind of into this sachet away onto the next segment theme we've got going here. Right, it, it's working really well. I and know. look, we're the time no breaks. Even no working. breaks. This isn't no a break. unionized show. We can do it. We can do it. We don't have to do it, so it's it's you know also that. it's also not a non-unionized job show. <laughs> but it is what it is, and it's segment three. In the name of Z- or the word of Zangief, you get paid. <laughs> not yet. <anyway. laughs> Have we decided what this segment's called? Because the know. other two have kind of clear... Well, segment one, I suppose, is just local, which can mean whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, it's kind of... I kind can't of, wait till we talk about Earth as local. Lo- lo- local slash... <laughs> the asteroid is coming, segment one. We're all gonna we're gonna die, die, so hello, Alpha Centauri. How you doing? We're, we're, we're not here anymore. Personal perspectives on print. Personal perspectives. I know we know what it's not being called. Oh, God. Oh, we have to keep it away from that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yes, columnists. Uh, yeah, and columning. Writing columns. Uh, Loved it. it Loved it's it. It's enjoyable because it's just... Uh, um, okay, uh, imagine being paid to simply give your opinion and then have people go, Yeah, you're right. Take that ego stroke. And add money to it. That's See, why oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. I guess I was just maybe either terrible or too contrary because 
My, no, my, I occasionally got that was great and I agreed with you. But by and large, it was, you know, I got, <laughs> the best one I ever got was a column that got sent back to me and there was a picture, for various reasons, of a dildo in the column. I remember that. And it got sent back with an arrow pointed at this big, floppy, flesh-colored cock, like, very cock reminiscent dildo that said Blake's mouth here. Which, you know, grand scheme, sure. <laughs> they were trying to be offensive. I was so proud. It was, the, it was, and I, I got, a, I got, I didn't get much actual hate mail. The little bit I got was, because we live here, very personal and terrible. Uh, but that made me proud. That made me laugh so hard that someone had that visceral of a reaction. Yeah. It was just, and you know, and I, and I know Cape Breton, so I didn't think that that was meant with hate so much as that was meant with ire, and ire's different. Yeah. Ire's, ire would punch you in the face in the bar, so you don't go drinking in certain districts on certain islands that are, you know, still part of this province, whether certain people would like it or not. Yeah. But, but ire wouldn't, like, you know, ire's not going to come to your office with a gun for Christ's sakes, which was an occasional thing that was ballyhooed. Yeah, it always came up. Exactly. <laughs> But, like, no, it was, I was very, very happy with that. That was great. I, I touched someone. And a wonderfully strong reaction. I think the strongest reaction. So artistic. I, so artistic. The strongest reaction I ever got, not counting the, the fake ads, uh, because mm. some, of, some of those got those lots were, of fun. Those were perfection. Oh, I. Those the, were always those perfection. Are, those are part of my permanent portfolio. I loved making. So what what I would do is uh, uh because the the magazine had no advertising whatsoever, uh, I, I I could have a lot of fun with readers by making ads that looked like actual ads that were already mm -hmm. out there or ones that see you know just followed basic mm -hmm. ad design. Um, and uh, uh, sometimes I would get uh, responses from people who thought they were real. Uh, as with the previously uh, previously mentioned uh, uh, Moncton Chamber of Commerce, um, some very this is that the obviously serious reactions. Some like, very very this is that uh, so good. Uh, kind of so reactions. Good. No, those any any time. Okay, so we once upon a time we shared a cubicle wall. Yeah, and any time there was a peek over the cubicle wall, and can you look at this? <laughs> so just dying of laughter. So happy to be given a chance to weigh in on it at all, and just more dying of laughter. Yeah, like very, very, very fun. Yeah, but yeah, the the strongest reaction I ever got from a column, uh, a negative reaction, mm. was I wrote about I wrote uh, the the title came first uh, because it, uh, how could it not? Um, in so, a minute, I want to get back to the danger of that. Yeah, cross cubicle approval. By the way, against, oh, against the world. Yeah, sorry. But, but uh, uh, so so we used to have to write uh, uh, one column a week, kind of thing. It was just pure your opinion. And in Halifax, there are one? a few. Uh, okay, maybe a few, depending on. Uh, in Halifax, there is a uh, a culture that um, <coughs> uh, a few things are untouchable, and one of them is the donair, which is. Uh, uh, randomized meat that's supposed to be mostly <laughs> lamb, uh, sliced into a, uh, a pita with lettuce, tomato, onion, and a sauce that is, it's vinegar, sugar, and powdered milk. Um, You've yeah. done better than any cook show outside of this region ever. <laughs> any cooking segment on any... Yeah, that's all a Halifax donair is. If you add anything else to it, you can go fuck yourself. And I say that as someone who is explaining a story about how I wrote a column called We Don't Na Need Another Hero, uh, spelled G-Y-R-O. Nice. Uh, talking about how uh, a city shouldn't a attach themselves so strongly to a single incident, uh, which is actually more a play on... Or, or a single uh, food stuff, which is actually more a play on the, uh, the collapse of the, uh, the fish stock. And that's the point, is when I tell jokes, they're usually layered with stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I always get, and in this case, I got I got a response from people who, they see that first layer, and they don't go digging for anything else. And they were, I, I got banned permanently <laughs> from the Donair Crawl, the Halifax <laughs> Donair Crawl, for, for pointing that's out delightful. that this is essentially, oh, yeah. it just points to how pedantic and small we are 
where we go, we have this one food, let's make everything about this one food instead of having some kind of organic growth into like New York pizzas. In fairness, there is nothing organic about a donor. This is absolutely true. Uh, that was definitely invented uh, uh, either in a lab or dug up from a mine. It's it's, it's mostly sheep based, and then it's cloned from Dolly. That's, yeah, essentially. Oh, it's something true. was revealed about Dolly uh, uh, within the last month. Someone tried to kidnap her, but they got in the room with Dolly and all the other clones, and they couldn't tell which one was Dolly. Oh, I hate you. This so they terrible. didn't kidnap her. This is why you don't do stand up. <laughs> That, that's a real fucking... That actually happened. This is why the world shouldn't do stand-up. That's <laughs> terrible. Oh, my God. Um, without without naming any names mm. at all, uh, I caught holy hell for writing just what I thought was a short, sarcastic uh, column on a business card of an official that had uh, a number of different local languages on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Including Gaelic and French, and I believe... I can't... I think... I thought maybe... Uh, it, it had... Um, One Chinese dialect, either Mandarin or... Chinese and uh, uh, Mi'kmaq. Yeah. And my, and my point at the time wasn't that, you know, these are not languages worth acknowledging or protecting or <clears throat> using in daily life if you are going to learn these languages. That's great. Yeah. But virtue signaling by having them on your business card when, when I when I doubt you speak when I doubt you're a polyglot. Plus, if I recall, he had kind of like tweeted a photo out of, of it, so he was like, "I can't imagine how bragging. it came to my attention otherwise." Yeah, but it, it, it was very much bright. Oh my god, the again the the ire, I, which is a, not nearly so charming when it's so close at hand, and and, and exhibited by people in positions of authority, especially, like but. Supporters and all kinds of people, just linguists for Christ's sakes. Like, man, sometimes you misjudge the mood on something you think is innocuous. And... Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. How about the time that I, 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 I knew exactly what I was doing in terms of like moods and like, I, I judged this perfectly. It wasn't innocuous though. It was during the film strike. So uh, a couple of years <laughs> ago, uh, the local uh, oh, film. Lord. And TV production people, um, which is uh, a, a loud but small segment of the province, got upset at a change the liberal government was making to their <coughs> tax credit program. Mm -hmm. uh, so in Nova Scotia, if you are a, a production coming in from out of province, uh, you get tax credits and tax credits out the ass. You essentially get handed a, 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 a blank check that you fill in at the end and it takes care of your expenses. You might be overstating it, but you might be overstating it. I, I, I'm just barely simplifying it because it, it uh, the, the, the real details of it are only determining uh, what quotas you have to hit before you get that blank check. Now, in America, you don't get that shit. Uh, in America, you either film in Hollywood where everything is tax deductible or free to begin with, or you pay out the ass. Um, what they do with uh, small industries like Nova Scotia and New Zealand with the Lord of the Rings and the various other ones um, is they go to them and they essentially blackmail them by saying, listen, we can put you on the map. We can be, we can have our production here. With, you know, just this one production, which we swear will spurn on an industry, but you're going to have to give us all of our demands mm -hmm. and I was pointing out that uh, uh, capitulating to an industry that already doesn't make us money it only makes itself money isn't a good way to <clears throat> progress as a, a, a province it's just being used I get on the other side that many local jobs legit were at stake yeah I do get that and I and I do care about that I do but the tone of necessity, yeah, and their of jobs support, of the tone of necessity from people, because the tone of necessity from people that are employed by the film industry, I completely understand. Stand up for yourselves. You work for the film industry. I get it. Of course, you're going to feel this is the most necessary thing. Yeah. But the tone of necessity that I saw from people <laughs> who were screaming and railing against subsidizing the Yarmouth ferry on a daily basis, yeah, was fucking lampoonish. It was nonsense. It Just, was, and and. The worst part was, it would be, 
wouldn't it just be a miracle if anyone making those two arguments would have noticed any cognitive dis- dissonance? But they, there wasn't. Never. There was no acknowledgement of it. And yeah. you call it out, and you just get railed at for it, and with no acknowledgement of maybe there is some equation between the two. Yeah. None. And, and the, the truth is that uh, uh, even... Even with the most successful things that come out of uh, Nova Scotia's uh, film and television industry, they're so they're either so cliche niche or they're talking about somewhere else that it doesn't actually matter. Um, uh, the Mist is uh, the most successful thing in terms of like reaching American audiences, and all that shit happens in Derry, Maine. So mm-hmm. you don't even know that it's Nova Scotia unless you're from Nova Scotia and recognize, oh, there's the Bedford Place Mall. I'm super fine. <laughs> with Nova Scotia standing in for Derry, Maine and creating jobs in my backyard and all kinds of that. And, and you know, it's always fun to meet a celebrity. And in Halifax, it's very easy. And yeah. you get interviews and there's all kinds of spun-off and all kinds of economic benefits. And I get that. And I'm willing, legit as well, I'm not so fiscally conservative that I won't acknowledge a, a, a happy willingness to pay some tax dollars to support that. I will, because we do live where we do, and it is hard to get any fucking thing off the ground. So yeah, let's, this is true. if it has any knock-on effect, let's support it a reasonable amount that is at least slightly lower than, or at its farthest extreme, equal to the knock-on economic effect that it has. Yeah. But there, that was not the demand in my in my view of it at all. No, it, 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 was, it was more just... Um, it, it really write the check. More, yeah, write the check, don't rock the boat. Write the check, don't rock the boat. Mm-hmm. You know, because... That was also the same slogan used by the Yarmouth Ferry. No, it's true. And then it... Uh, uh, that one got cancelled, and then another one came, and it got cancelled. What's uh, the current status of that nonsense? Uh, it is... Uh, I believe it's been purchased by uh, another group and is still going, but thankfully at the moment there's no provincial money in it. Oh, God, fine. But we did have to buy... Bar Harbor's fucking uh, 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 new dock for them. Like, oh, I remember that. Uh, yes, yeah. we had to we had to fund all kinds of security upgrades and nonsense. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, no, writing columns on things like the Yarmouth Ferry were that was boring. Yeah, that was boring because it was just like let me say what everyone's saying in a different tone of voice. My favorite things to do were not necessarily to be contentious about an argument although that was certainly very fun, it was to take something that I knew if everyone was paying attention to, yeah. they would strenuously argue against. But the, no one was paying attention. So I was going to strenuously argue with, against and just start throwing stones until someone paid <laughs> attention to the breaking glass over there, or at least the ponging of innocent, unnoticed commentary stones falling away as they bounced off. Uh, the most fun I ever had with them were ones where I could just... I could, I could, I could do the the teacher thing where I just like, hey, I bet you didn't know the context of this. Mm-hmm. And one history lesson later, I'm two and a half fucking pages, you know, through and and talking about something that, if if you jump to the end of the article, you would have no fucking clue how it connected to the beginning. But in this liquored province, yeah, railing against the NSLC. Oh, always, not for in, not easy. for anything they do. Not for anything they do at all, not no. for any of the facts about the way they're made up legally and the way they're funded by who and the way they fund what. Not about any of that, no. About the argument that anyone ever made that privatized liquor industry on a provincial scale was worse on, as far as I could tell through researching because it made me angry all the time. Yeah. Through any segment at all. Drunk driving rates? Nope. Carding at liquor stores? Nope. nope. Pricing? Nope. Availability of selection? Nope. And mm-hmm. drink general drinking rates? No, nothing. Just no. Yeah. And it simply exists because it exists. And anytime anyone tried to tweet me to a link to Mad Canada, you want to see Mad Canada. Oh my god. Nothing. Oh. If you're going to be biased and you're going to be believed by everyone, I will despise you. And yeah. No matter what your motives, no matter yeah. what your motives, but they're we're so, all against drunk driving. But they're, they're, but they're just, mothers against drunk driving. Don't drunk statistic. But just, they're no, mothers no. against drunk driving. <sighs> don't you don't you believe every word they say without questioning? Oh, aren't you, you're supposed to believe every word they say without questioning? It depends. Questioning. Am I me or am I pretty much fucking everyone? There's white crosses on the highway. Don't you don't you want to believe? That they're right, 
that 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 mother man's drunk driving is completely right about the context of every single one of those. I'm so angry about this. If it isn't taken, I'm actually gonna go back on Twitter, but I'm gonna start an account called Mad Canada with one D. I'm gonna do it right now. We're gonna end the show so I can do that. You down with that? Yeah, we're done with that. All right. Well, bye. Thanks for listening. Who have you been? <laughs> Michaela I might be Mad Canada. You don't know. I haven't had time to check it. I've been Blake Hunsley though. I used to be in charge of this program. This this was this was a bit of an episode for me. This is great. I feel like an idiot abroad. Where suddenly it's all about me, except I'm not angry about it. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Carl Pilkington did very well out of that. Tune in for the next episode, and we finally get tons of hey faggot email. Not so much hey tranny. <laughs> Have you got any yet? Nothing yet. Damn it. I know. It, it takes a little bit of time, but, you know, when, once the comments and the money start coming in, what we really need to do is say something super offensive. I was just thinking I was going to I was gonna get you to clip that damn it reaction so we can replay it when I start getting bags and bags of hate mail. Damn it! Remember, I, remember the days? <laughs> remember the days when people left us alone and I wasn't afraid to walk outside? Part of that, no. No. Goodbye! Goodbye.